one and all so on this uh, on this auspicious occasion i would like to welcome uh, our uh, bapuji institute of engineering technology director uh -huh. sir uh, professor bai rishavendra pa yeah ala hogi sir kelsidiya yes ha uh -huh. yeah okay 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 so professor ji ellaru ka admit madike sir kodi sir admit all kodi sir admit yeah. yeah once once again yeah so good morning one and all so on this suspicious occasion i would like to welcome our bapuji institute of engineering technology director sir y rishavendra sir dr hb arvin principal and also today's speaker mr karibesraj director of sumuka infotech topic of his uh, today's iot made easy and also i would like to thank uh, various department various uh, college uh, degree colleges principal and staff uh, and uh, various department uh, degree colleges uh, uh, students uh, and also my colleagues uh, and uh, my dear students of this uh, second fourth and sixth semester students uh, yes sir uh, once again uh, and also uh, one thing 2020 batch so those students also joined uh, today's uh, uh, webinar so i would like to welcome to 2020 batch also so so now stage is yours sir thank you sir yes sir karibe sir yes sir sir yes yes sir yes sir so i am admitting all students sir yeah One. yeah sure sir okay okay no problem Sir, is screen visible, sir? Ah, visible. Yeah. If my voice is clear and screen is visible, I would like to start the session. Sir. Okay, okay, okay. You can start now. Yes, sir. Okay. You, yes, you continue, sir. Okay. okay. So first, I would like to thank, uh, you know, director, sir, principal, sir, HOD, sir, and uh, program coordinator, and all uh, teaching faculties of uh, Department of MCA, BIT, Dhamgere, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, to share my knowledge sir in between students are joining i will switch to window yeah. okay so let us start our uh, webinar the topic is iot made easy so let us start our discussion from what is the definition of iot Sir, is my PPT is visible? Uh, visible. Yes, visible. Sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, you can start. Okay. So, as you all know, the IoT stands for Internet of Things. Okay. So, what is Internet and what is Things? Okay. So, all of you know that internet stands for it is a network, and the things means so many physical things are there. Uh, instead of giving a theory lecturing on this uh, IoT topic, I have a short uh, video clip which illustrates a prototype of how how IoT works. I would like to play that video. After watching that video, we shall continue our uh, discussion of what is IoT and how all the things work. Please let us uh, watch that. Uh, prototype video
So now let me define what is an IoT. If you watch this video, we have things like GPS module, and we have development code, we have a sensor, we have a vehicle, and also we are getting some notifications. So the overall idea of this prototype is to detect the accident being occurred and notify the end users about the accident and also share the geolocation of the place where the actual accident has been occurred. So this is a simple example of an IoT prototype. So once again, I will play. Yeah, so. Yes, so the device what you are able to see is a GPS module. We have used this module to fetch the geolocation. Geolocation means longitude and latitude of the place. So this is first thing. This is a development port. This is a sensor. Okay. So when vehicle falls, yeah, with the help of sensor, we are detecting the event and we are sending notification to mobile so that user can get to know where accident has occurred. Yeah. It is also displaying the location too. So now, now we can define what is IoT is. So in this example, we have various things which are connected in a network, they communicate with each other to achieve an aim. So in this example, what we are achieving, we have developed this prototype to detect the accident and also to notify the end users where the accident has been occurred. So the simple definition of IoT is, it's a network of many physical things which communicate with each other to achieve an aim. Okay, now the next thing is, as a MCS student, what are all the skill sets I need to have to you know, learn the IoT things or to develop an IoT application? For MCA students, what are all the skill sets we need? We shall focus on this. Okay. So to begin with IoT, one has to have the basic knowledge of sensors. What is sensor? I will explain. And the second thing is, you need to have the knowledge of development boards. What is a development board? Uh, within a few seconds, I will show. And also you have the basic knowledge of programming, like the knowledge of C, C++ or Python is essential. And also the basic knowledge of how to connect the sensors with development boards, how to use jumper wires, such things is also essential. So for anyone, who is willing to learn IoT application should have these four things. That is, what is sensor? How to use sensor? What is the development board? How to use the development board? And the basic knowledge of programming, like if we have the basic knowledge, like what is function, what is variable, what is control statement, that much is enough. And also the basic skills of connecting the components. Okay, so these are all the four things one must have. Let us 
pay attention to what is the sensor. Okay, so this is a sensor called tilt sensor. I have used this sensor in the video just I uh, you know uh, displayed. So I have used this sensor to detect the physical location of any object. So in the prototype, we used this sensor uh, to detect whether a vehicle as standing properly has fallen. For that purpose, we have used this sensor. Okay. And we have sensors like uh, DHT level, this sensor with which we can fetch you know, humidity and temperature. And we have a sensor called range sensor. It is also known as ultrasonic sensor with which we can you know, uh, find out the distance. Nowadays, it is being used in most of the smart sanitizers. This sensor is used, you must have seen. And we have sensor like you know, GPS location. This one also I have used in the prototype to fetch the geolocation. So these are all the sensors, few sensors I have displayed. We have so many sensors in the market, which sensors to use depends upon your problem statement. Okay. So the first thing, which is sensor is very useful with which we can fetch the information. Okay. And then we have the things like development boards. So first, let me tell you what is a development board is. In simple, it is a card sized computer. Computer means it has the things like microprocessor, RAM, ROM, and input output pins. Therefore, we can call a uh, development board as a card sized computer. So this is a uh, one board called Arduino Uno board. Okay. So this is another board called ESP32 board. Uh, this is also similar to Uno board, but it has some extra features. And this is the well-known Raspberry Pi board. So which board to use? Again, it depends upon the problem you are going to solve. So based on your problem statement, you have to select boards and you have to select sensors. Okay, the two things are clear. Now we need to have some programming skills. So if you, if you know the basic things, that much is enough to develop an IoT application. Okay, and now I will show one simple C program and I would like to convert that program into an IoT application. So in between, I will focus my cam to the things I have so that you can understand properly. Hope the device is visible. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, let me write one simple C program. I am using developer C editor and demo. So all of you are familiar with the basic structure of C program. So the first thing we have to write is preprocessor statement. You know the reason for writing this one. And we have to write a function called main. Let us display one simple statement. Hello, welcome to IoT. It is very simple program. Uh, all of you know that reason for writing SVDIO is to make use of library function called printf. And every C program must have a main function. This is, this is a rule. And printf is a standard output statement. Let us execute this program. Okay, so hope you can see the output. It is displaying, hello, welcome to IoT. Okay, now I would like to add one features to it. Let me display one more statement. Have a nice day. So when I execute this program, I should get two statements. Yes. Hello, welcome to IoT. This is my first printf. Have a nice day is my second printf. So what I want is, I would like to add interval between these two statements. I mean, 
I, I, I would like to introduce some delay between these two statements. So we can do that. We have one more uh, header file called windows.h. It has a library function called sleep. Here you can pass uh, second as the argument. Here I have written sleep one. It means after displaying hello, welcome to IoT, it should give an interval of one second. And after that, it has to display have a nice day. So let us check whether it works or not. Hope uh, you got the difference. Hello, welcome to IoT got displayed first. After a delay of one second, the second statement got displayed. Have a nice day. Let me show you once again. Let me run. Hope you got the difference. Okay. So instead of hello, welcome to IoT, let me display a statement called on. After that, let me display off. On off it is coming. Now what I want is, I want to do this continuously. I mean, on should be displayed, after a delay of one second, off should be displayed. And again, the process should be continuously done. For that purpose, what I will do, I will write one while loop here. Let it be infinite. That's why I have given one. Yeah. Now I will add one more delay here. Okay, so it is clear. Since I have used one inside the while loop, what does it mean? It is an infinite loop. It never ends. It is always true. Okay. After entering into the body of the loop, it displays on. And after a delay of one second, it displays off. Again, it gives a delay of one second. And again, it displays on. If I execute this statement, I should be able to see on off with a delay of one second. So let me execute this. Yes, so it never going to end because we have used yeah. infinite while loop. Okay. Uh, hope you are able to understand this code. If you have any queries, you can ask me now. If you have uh, any questions, you can ask. If everything is fine, I would move to Arduino related things. So I will convert this program into an IoT application. Is anybody having any doubts with respect to this? No, sir. Okay. Then now let us learn how to convert this program into an IoT application. So in your academic subjects, you have learned all these lab programs. What you have done is you have uh, you know prepared your programs with the help and editor you have compiled and executed. That's what you have done. So when it comes to IoT application, you need to have the basic knowledge of hardware. I mean, the program, what you have written must be loaded into development course. And here we will have interaction with the hardware. So here in your academics, you have used a printf. What it does, it displays statements on the screen. Therefore, screen is the output device. If you want to read the data from, keyboard, uh, from the users, you have used scanf. So scanf is the input device. So in your labs, in your academic subject, what you have done is you have used keyboard as the input device, screen as the output device. When it comes to IoT, we need to replace our keyboard with sensor and we need to replace our monitor or a screen with things like LCD screen, LEDs, motors, such things. The first transition from lab program to IoT program is you need to use sensors as the input. You need to use LED or the screen as the output. So how to do that? I will show with an example. So when it comes to programming with the hardware, for this session, I'm planning to use Arduino board. I would like to show you, you know, the picture of that Arduino. 
this is how it looks like. So this is our Arduino board or else even you can, I will place to here. Yeah, hope you can see this one. Right now I'm having, this is our Arduino board. Okay, so the purpose of using this board is to develop simple IoT applications. Okay, the first thing you need to learn is to program with the Arduino boards, your Turbo C++ developer C++ does not help. You need to install an ID called Arduino. It is uh, available for free in its official website, arduino.cc. You have to download and install Arduino IDE. I have already installed. Let me launch this IDE. Okay, so here you have to choose new. Okay, let me save this. Save as. Okay, blinking demo. Okay, fine. So uh, this is how an Arduino IDE looks like. The first thing is you have to you know, connect board with the help of USB port. Let me connect and show you. Okay, I have connected. Okay, now to check everything is fine and installation is successful, you have to select the option called tools. In tools, you have an option called port. Here, you should be able to see some COM ports. Here, uh, I'm able to see COM4. So if you get to see this message of port number, installation is successful. So you, you need to select this port number I have selected. And then you have to select the board you are programming with. See, by default, it is showing ESP32. I will change to Arduino Uno because I'm using this board. Yeah, okay. So the first thing is installing the Arduino IDE and then connecting your hardware with the help of USB port. And after connecting, make sure the port number is visible. In this example, it is COM4 and board is Arduino Uno. Okay, so having done these things, you need to proceed further. Okay, so what is the difference between C and Arduino platform? See in C, having main is must. So this is what you have done in your lab programs. When it comes to Arduino, here we don't have function called main. So the first to change is we don't use main function here. Then what are the functions we supposed to use? Hope you can see the function setup and loop. So these are the two function. Uh, these are must have functions. In Arduino platform, having setup and loop is must. So what is the difference between setup and loop? Let me explain. The so setup is a function which gets called only once. It gets called only once, okay? Therefore, we use this function for initialization purpose. And loop is another function. As the name indicates, this loop, this function gets called repeatedly. So what I did in the previous program, I had written one infinite while loop, right? So here you don't have to write that such infinite while loop. The loop itself gets called repeatedly, so you need not to use any infinite loop here. Okay, the, the two things you need to remember, they are having setup and loop is must. Setup gets called only once. We use setup for initialization purpose and loop uh, gets called repeatedly. So the things that has to be done repeatedly must be written in a loop function. Okay, uh, let me write one simple program and to demonstrate you. Okay. So in this example, I would like to uh, write or do one output operation. For that purpose, I will use LED as my output device and I, I will try to blink that LED with some delay. Fine. See, now, I, when it comes to using Arduino board, we have pins, pins, and technically we call them as general purpose input output pins. Hope you can see here, I'm putting device near the camera. Okay, so we have pins, uh, they are numbered serially. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, we have to define the pin I'm going to use for output operation. 
So in this example, I will use pin number seven as the output device. So I will define here pin mode. We have a predefined function called pin mode with which we can define the operation of a pin. Okay. It takes two arguments. The first argument is pin number. The second is mode of operation. So I will write output. So what does it mean? I'm going to use pin number seven as the output pin. Fine. In loop, let me do one output operation. So here we don't have printf because we are dealing with hardware. That's why uh, we are not supposed to use printf here. Instead, we have to pass signals. Since, see, my aim is to turn on the LED. So this is how the LED looks like. Okay. All of you are familiar with LEDs. Most of the electronic gadgets have LEDs. Okay. So this electronic device, this device need some voltage to get turned on. If you do not supply voltage, it gets turned off. Okay, fine. So in the loop statement, what I will do, I will do one output operation by calling the function digital write. Here we don't have printf. Instead, we have to use digital write. Okay. To which pin? To pin number seven. Uh, what is the data? High. So what does it mean? By writing this statement, I am sending high signal to pin number seven. Okay. So I would like to keep LED in this state for one second. For that purpose, we have function called delay. I will pass thousand. What does it mean? Thousand milliseconds means one second. Fine. After one second, I would like to turn off the LED. Digital write pin number seven, low. Instead of I, I am passing low. Again, I will introduce delay of one second. So this is my program. So uh, what it does, it sends high signal to pin number seven and it keeps LED in that state for one second. And again, it turns off the LED and keeps the LED in the off state for one second. And this process repeatedly done. Hence, when I execute the program, I should be able to see LED blinking for one second. So this is my program. And after writing the program, you have to make the proper circuit connection. Okay, so I will show you. Okay, so this is our LED. Okay, so every electronic components will be having two things that is plus and minus. The pin which is shorter is minus and another one is plus. Okay, so to connect the things with board, we need to use breadboards. So I'm showing one simple breadboard. Breadboard comes in various sizes. This is larger breadboard, this one is smaller, anything you can use. So what I will do, I will connect the positive with first hole and negative with the fourth one. Okay, so the, the thing is simple. We are using breadboards to make circuit connection, fine. And again, you need, to, you need to use the things like jumper wires. So these are the wires or buses we must use. Okay. I'm using male to male wire. Okay. Let me connect. The positive leg is connected to pin number seven and the negative leg is connected to ground pin. In the board, you can see an option called GND that is called ground. Okay. So this is how my circuit looks like. Once again, I will show you. Yes. Now let me dump the code into the board. So the first option is verify with which you can compile the code. The second option is upload. When you press upload button, it compiles and also uploads the code. Let me do that. Hope here you can see compiling the sketch. In Arduino platform, program is called sketch. Now it is being compiled. Now we can see uploading. Now we got the message done uploading. Hope you can see the output. Hope you can see the LED being blinking. Is it visible? Can you see the output? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. 
yeah so this is how we can write simple programs with the knowledge of c if you have any doubts regarding this no sir oh, okay so i performed an output operation in my second program i would like to show you how to perform input operation with the help of sensors for that purpose i am going to use a sensor called soil moisture sensors we have so many sensors in the market but for this class i am using soil moisture sensor so using this sensor we can read the data with the help of board let me show you how to perform an output operation okay sorry not output operation input operation so this is what the circuit diagram i am going to follow for your reference i would like to display the image yeah see when it comes to sensors they will be having pins like plus minus a not d not okay so this sensor is having four pins the first pin is you know uh, a not pin and then we have d not pin we have vcc and we have ground so what is vcc ground see the thing is very simple these electronic devices to make to make them functional they need energy that is voltage we need to supply the voltage so in our hardware language the plus we call it as vcc and we have negative point that is called as ground so it has output pins like a not and d not a not stands for analog output d not stands for digital output the confusion is which one we should use whether analog or digital that depends upon our problem so in this example my aim is to read the data from sensor that is soil moisture sensor i would prefer to go with analog pin okay so again yeah so let me show how it looks like okay so this is our sensor i am not using d not i am using a not that is analog output vcc and ground okay okay first i would like to write the program and then i will make the connection this is my second program let me choose new let us save this program okay uh reading okay so as i said before in setup function we have to define the mode of pin since in this example i am planning to do input operation i will call the same function pin mode here in our arduino board we have analog input pins they range from a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 they are mentioned in the board okay analog in is there and there is an option called analog in i would like to use a0 that's why i pass first argument as a0 and instead of output i will write input so what does it mean i am defining a0 pin as the input pin then now in the loop i want to read the information from the sensor how to read how to read we have a predefined function called analog read okay to this you have to mention the port that is a0 the pin a0 pin okay so what it does it reads the information from the sensor and we need to store that read value into a variable i will declare one integer variable called val it is simple on our rx side i am calling the function analog read and i am passing a0 as the argument uh, reason i am planning to read from a0 pin okay the read information is stored in a variable called val okay fine so this is my program now the problem is when you write programs if you miss any semicolon let me show with c example if you miss semicolon you get compile time error right 
see uh, in software development environment we have a uh, concept like you know a, a debugger uh, which displays the errors being occurred but in when it comes to hardware platform we don't have such thing uh, to to use a watch window we will have to use a facility called a serial monitor see uh, what i am planning to say is i want to display the data read from the sensors to display the data we don't have screen as we used to use with c here we have a concept called a serial monitor window it is like a watch window where you can dump the content of your variable and trace the code so to use that serial monitor first you have to initialize it serial dot begin to this you have to mention the baud rate 9600 is the baud rate of arduino board okay and then we can display our data on the serial monitor how to do that serial dot print ln well and let me introduce a delay 500 milliseconds it is clear okay so once again i repeat we can use serial monitor to display the content of variables fine so this is my program let me do the connection i will connect vcc to 5 volt pin okay and ground to ground and a not to a not okay so this is how my connection looks like simple connection okay okay so the sensor light got turned on it means the connection is successful now let me dump the code okay we got the message done uploading to see the output you have to select the serial monitor go to tools and there we have option called serial monitor okay here you need to select the baud rate also here we have by default 11 5200 is there i will change it to 9600 hope you can see the value 1023 okay so this is the value this sensor is giving so this is the default value if i insert this sensor into a soil the value gets changed let me show you i have a sample soil okay let me insert sensor into it hope you can see the changes can you see the different values yes sir yeah so 398 is now displayed now it got changed since i have moved the sensor position if i take off from soil again it changes yeah so this is how we can read the data from sensor so this is a simple input operation with the help of sensors so serial monitor which plays very important role uh, while developing the iot applications do you have any doubts with respect to this program if anybody is having doubts you can ask me now no sir no sir no sir no sir okay any doubts uh, at stream
No, sir. No. Okay. 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 Uh, sir, uh, one, one video I would like to show them, sir. Okay. 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 Uh, what of thanks by Dr. Shankar Goda, TV uh, Forum Coordinator. The RWF of uh, MCA Forum and uh, Department of MCA, thanks to Director Professor Vaibhushmendrappa, uh, Principal Dr. H. P. Arvin and HOD Dr. M. Prasad and my colleagues and uh, second and fourth and sixth semester so MCA students and participants. And uh, the Karvisraj explained the topic uh, IOT made easy. Some of the explanation is introduced to IoT prototypes and develop the programming habits uh, with uh, hardware. And a special thanks to Karvis Raju, director of Sumo, Su, uh, Sumuko Infotech, Down Gere. Thank you, thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks. So, finally, uh, for one minute, I would like to show one prototype which is being selected from KCST cell. Uh, this project we have done for engineering students of PIET. Yeah. Okay, you can show, sir. Yeah, yeah. So the the idea of this project is to develop a wheeled robot which distributes food and medicines to isolation wards, and it is loaded with camera so that uh, we can have the live streaming of the situation at the ward. So this is how it works. So it is controlled using a mobile application. Yeah, this is how it works. So it is loaded with sensors also to fetch the bioparameters of the patients. So this project has got sponsorship from KCST for engineering students. So this is how you can develop prototypes for your academic projects. Thank you one and all uh, for the participation. If you have any queries, you can ask. Otherwise, I would like to end the session. Students, any questions we can ask? Shall I, shall I end the session, sir? Okay, we can end the session. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.